are honored to have with us Ambassador George Talbot, permanent representative of Guyana to the United Nations, who was elected chairman of the second committee of the 67th session of the UN General Assembly. Ambassador, congratulations. Having known you and admired your leadership for quite some time, I am personally delighted to know that you will be leading and guiding the discussions at this session of the General Assembly. Ambassador, let me begin by asking about the follow-up to Rio Plus 20. This session of the General Assembly will be crucial to begin the implementation of the decisions of Rio Plus 20 and keep the momentum and the spirit of Rio. What do you envision to be the key areas where the attention of delegations and other stakeholders will concentrate on? Well, thank you very much, uh, Patricia. I once had the, the honor to serve under your own chairmanship of the G77, where, which was a sort of schooling for me in my early days at the UN. Uh, coming to your question, I think the delegations will focus in a major way on the, the major processes identified in the outcome document. I think the sustainable development goals process is uh, one that will, I think, attract enormous attention by delegations because it speaks to the kind of paradigm, the kind of framework that will be in place as the MDG cycle comes to an end. A lot will focus also on the question of finance, uh, which has been one of the key uh, shortcomings, I would say, of the processes that have gone on before. We have managed to agree on many major uh, outcomes, but the implementation deficit has been a continuing uh, challenge. Uh, so I think finance, uh, how to finance uh, the, the outcome of Rio will be an important focus of attention. For me also, uh, personally, I think the question of food security, I, I, I think should be one of those issues on the front burner. I, I suspect that it will also find expression in some of the processes uh, related to sustainable development goals, related to the post-2015 uh, framework. But I think there's also an imperative to act with greater urgency because as the data indicates, there are more than one billion people who are right now without food uh, on a daily basis. And they can't wait until we develop all the goals and the indicators in a post-2015 framework. They need action right now. So uh, how the international community responds to that challenge will be very critical. I, Indications are that food prices, for example, are again on the rise. We have seen very major droughts in, in crop producing areas in the U.S. and other countries. And so the food security challenge is front and center, I think, and uh, one of the urgent tasks in the implementation of Rio Plus 20. There are high expectations for the second committee to reach significant decisions by the end of this year and well into next year. Are there ways in which the committee could be enhanced to facilitate agreements? The committee, in my view, and this applies to several of the committees of the General Assembly, provide an opportunity for a focused debate consideration of, of key questions on the UN agenda. And I think one of the areas in which we can focus is to try to raise the level of participation in the work of the committee. I think, for example, there is nothing that uh, precludes the possibility of ministerial level discussion on one or other of the themes of the second committee, which I think would help to give some visibility, uh, raise the profile of the discussion, and perhaps impact on the outcome in a more uh, uh, enduring kind of way. I think, of course, there are ways and means in which delegations can collaborate more closely in, in coming to a closure on some of the issues. There are a number of, uh, I would say, um, housekeeping matters that can help us meeting deadlines uh, in terms of the submission of proposals, uh, the opportunity of a greater use of expert input in some of the work of the committee. I know by definition every person who is not an ambassador at the UN is, is, is an expert. But also I think we can benefit from the uh, experience of those who are on a daily basis working on some of the issues in the field that we 
concentrate on in the debates and the negotiations of the committee. So the question of visibility, the question of uh, expert input into the work of the committee, I think are some of the ways in which we can improve on the delivery of our mandate. The World Summit on Sustainable Development greatly advanced the use of partnerships to facilitate the implementation of sustainable development. We were very pleased to see several references of partnerships in key areas of the Rio Plus 20 outcome. How could partnerships be better positioned to serve as an effective mechanism for the implementation of the Rio Plus 20 outcome? Well, thank you very much. The, the question of partnerships, uh, I think, has been in the Rio process from its very beginning. So uh, it's very encouraging to see that that uh, initial uh, element, which was, I guess, novel at the original Rio conferences, assumed greater importance coming through Johannesburg. Uh, the partnerships uh, have been an important vehicle for advocacy uh, in, in ad agenda setting, I mean, bringing issues to the fore. Uh, but I think there's possibility for it to be used more on the question of implementation, where uh, the gatherings at the global level, uh, they can be decentralized in some respects at the field level, at the regional level, at the national level, where the, the opportunity of bringing different actors together, uh, I think can help to advance implementation because this agenda is much bigger than any, any one government, than any one actor. And uh, the question of coherence is also important because as we work as we work together, we think we can iron out some of the challenges that our disparate actions can themselves generate. Uh, so I see a lot of promise in terms of the development of partnerships and implementation of Rio. There is a lot of goodwill, there is a lot of interest on the part of uh, well-meaning uh, actors, whether they be institutions, whether they be individuals, whether they be uh, foundations, for example, that can work together with governments and that can bring expertise, that can bring resources, and that can bring experiences to help to advance and address the problems in a very real way, very meaningful way. This session of the General Assembly is expected to be very intense and challenging. How are you preparing, Ambassador, for the tasks ahead? Well, consultation, uh, thinking through some of the issues. I will be seeking the advice of colleagues, uh, those who have served in this capacity in the past, uh, those who have worked on these issues in the committees, uh, in various capacities. I uh, rely on the Bureau members, their advice, their exper experience, their expertise. And I will do as much reading and, and preparation and thinking that I can in order to be in step with the demands of the committee. Ambassador Talbot, deeply grateful for your time today and sincere congratulations once again on your election. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure having this opportunity to exchange on some of the important issues on our agenda.